Hey guys, so I want to address the two biggest myths in throwing technique and coincidentally they both have to do with the sidearm. So the first myth, this is the biggest one, uh, I, I did 102 lessons in Texas in January and probably 85 people had heard this myth and most were following it. Um, I fixed them all though so now they're better but uh, the myth is that you want to keep your elbow close to the body when you throw a sidearm. Um, this is like it, it is so black and white that this could not be more wrong. Um, I, I coined the term rexing back in the 90s because when people did that, I thought they looked like uh, what a Tyrannosaurus Rex would look like trying to throw a golf disc, right? There is no power and nothing to be had by doing that right there. I mean, just have to watch someone do it to know that it's wrong. Power coming from here, right? I mean, that's where you're gonna be generating it. Now it's taught that way because it's trying to compensate for other poor mechanics or other poor teaching. But yeah, do not keep your elbow close to your body on the sidearm. I promise you it's incorrect. Um, but you have to do some other things right as well um, if you're not doing that. Uh, the second biggest myth though, it's not as common, it's not as commonly taught, but it's commonly or as commonly done. And that is, the myth is that sidearm is a sideways facing throw. I mean, it's a natural mistake because it's disc golf and with uh, backhands, obviously you're 90 degrees, pulling the disc across your body. So you see players all the time doing the same thing with the sidearm. They're turning sideways, they're doing an X step, a crow step, whatever you want to call it. It's also incorrect. Now, the reason why it can be taught is because you can watch some good players, some good sidearmers that throw this. They can get away with it because sidearm is mostly an arm throw. So if you aren't using your body at all and just using your arm, you can still kind of have a decent sidearm anyways. It doesn't mean it can't be better, and certainly it doesn't mean you can't learn quicker doing it correctly. You want to face forward. The run up on the sidearm is just one, two, three. Now the question is, if you're facing forward, where do you generate your power? Well, here's where the power comes from. It's actually where more power comes from when you face forward. What's gonna happen is, visualize the lower half of your body coming up to your waist, nothing but a spring from your well, say, say your belt line to about here, and then from here above is the upper half of your body. You're gonna create the power by creating tension on this spring, and then the spring is gonna snap back into place. That's gonna create the torque necessary to generate the power. So the way to, to, uh, to do this is you're gonna be stepping forward, one, two, three, with the lower half of your body facing forward. The upper half of the body is going to rotate. And when it rotates, now you've got tension right here, right? The lower half of the body is creating resistance that the upper half of the body can create tension against. And when that happens, the lower half of the body is going to win this battle and stay forward, forcing the upper half of the body, forcing the spring to then snap back into place. That's where you generate the power. That's the torque. That's where this comes from on the sidearm. It's also going to naturally, without even trying to, create more spin which means you don't have to do this whole T-Rexing thing that doesn't work anyways. So there's a lot more to it than that. I do private lessons, I'm gonna be in your town, but uh, those are the two biggest myths that we're gonna be correcting. And um, I pretty much am in a thousand when I get people not doing those two things, they're better for it. Uh, look forward to working with you guys.